I'm all in. Cool. There we go. Shove and a call. So Nikola Greiko officially the player at risk, but he is a four to one favorite here. We can see that sweetie has got two cards that block Lurz's gut shot. I know. He does not know that. He check calls for 60K. And it's a six what? on the turn. How? It's a set for Sweetie, but it's the straight for Lurza. My goodness. And suddenly, Manig Lurza becomes a three to one favorite. Boy, it did not take long for there to be a disgusting train wreck at this table. Action check to the aggressor. And with his set of sixes, Sweetie will fire again. The two biggest stacks at this table, two of the biggest stacks in the tournament. And it'll be interesting to see how Manigloza responds to this bet. A smooth call or a check raise? 130k is the bet. What do I like here? Let's think about a check raise. I think a check raise can look bluffy enough here. I think there's two flush draws out there now. I think there's, even though the six did make a straight, it only made the five seven straight, right? Two five also made a straight. So there's a couple of straights it made, but it did put a lot more straight draws out there. So I think that you can rep enough draws with a raise here. And I also think you can smooth call. I really don't know what's best. I am confident that Manic Lurzer, wizard German that he is, will make whatever the right decision is here. And then I will pretend as if I know why that is the right decision. And it looks like that decision is raise and raise big. It's a tower of green. Those chips worth 25K each. So it's a check raise to 600,000. He's making it chunky. And it's more than 4x. What does Sweetie do now? Well, I'm wondering what sorts of hands Lurzer thinks Sweetie's going to have here. Like, Sweetie, we know he's got a set of sixes, so he's got a hand that he'll put more chips in with, but I think sometimes Sweetie's going to have a hand he can just fold to a raise that size. He's played a time bank card. What I'm really curious to know right now is he happy about this raise, or is he a little stressed out knowing that two straights just got there? What's the two flush draws out there, though? He's got to be happy, right? He's got to be. And if it's not a diamond or a spade on the river, Sweetie could lose a lot more. Could also be a queen, a three, or a four on the river. He could lose none. Well, instead, it's the jack of diamonds, and I think that card might just save him. 1.43 million in the middle. Sweetie has roughly popped behind. Does Lurzer himself have to worry about? Right. 670? Uh, 670,000. So we know Sweetie's never raising. Can eliminate that from the equation. Can he get away from it? And Lurzer knows when Sweetie acts this pained, he wants a call. It's never a flush. There There's it is. There's the call, and this is a huge pop. And we will have a new chip leader in the EPT Monte Carlo main event. Massive. Nicola Sweetie's set of sixes beaten by Manig Lurza straight.
And Lurza now has a stack of 3.6 million, more than 180 big blinds. Really, really disgusting turn card for Nick Schweedy. So raise from under the gun, off a fairly short stack, one of the shortest at the table. I think the ace king of diamonds of Deira, most likely looking to three bet and play for stacks. There we go, 48,000 is the raise. Goes fairly small here. You don't really need to go too big since your opponent's short anyway. Uh oh, this one could get really interesting. Rascala behind with two oh, kings. Man. Man, this is so brutal. So brutal for someone like Deira. I mean, it could be brutal for Rascala too, depending on if an ace hits or not. But these sorts of situations in a tournament, you've got ace-king suitor to hand that you're almost never going to get away from pre-flop. Deira starts the hand with 41 big blinds. It's a very awkward stack size. And somehow, in the, the first three positions, Queen Jack, Ace King, Pocket Kings, can someone wake up with aces? Well, that's the thing. I, I just wonder how Deira's going to react to this because it is the first three positions where, you know, everybody's going to be at their tightest. And it goes under the gun open, plus one, three bets, plus two, four bets. Mm. And let's think about this as well. Deira was three betting versus someone who had a short stack. So he's not really going to put in many bluffs versus a short stack under the gun opener. So Riscala should be aware that Deira's range is pretty strong, which means he in turn is not going to bluff against it very much. So Deira may be able to realize here that Riscala has a really, really strong hand. The problem is his hand too is right in the top 5%. Yeah, and he just has to be all in. And we're all in, both players, you'd imagine... Oh, excuse me, he's called. Everybody relax. We're off to a flop. Just a call, and given what the <laughs> cards actually are, obviously... We like the oh call, and this is it. I'm so sorry, but you're just destined to go broke here when this happens. I mean, you could have got it in pre-flop, no one would have faulted you. Now, if you don't get it in on the flop, you, you're, you're a worse player than uh. if you somehow get away from this. It's so cruel to see the one remaining king. If he misses the board, he probably gets away. If he hits his ace, he's going to win the pot. But to find the one remaining king, it's probably going to send him broke. It's just so unlucky. <laughs> well, what does he lose to here? Obviously, tens and sevens and king ten, but they don't four bet pre-flop. So he loses to pocket kings. There's only one way to make that. He loses to pocket aces, but he has the ace of diamonds. And how There's many combinations of pocket kings are there out there, Spraggy? Right, that's one combination <laughs> of kings, three combinations of aces. That's not a lot of combinations. And rainy season has fired back up again in the UK. Somehow Dara is, he's just not out yet, is all I can say. He's calling. Is there any version of this where Dara does not go broke? He knows it, he can feel it. Nine of spades on the turn. I think that's just too great a possibility that he's chopping as well, right? Like, it's very, very possible his opponent has ace-king some of the time, too. And if he's ever bluffing, I don't know, something like ace-queen of spades on this turn and shoves, it's a disaster to fold ace-king. So I just don't think there's a way that Deira can get away. Maybe I am wrong. There's the all-in. There's in. the shove. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Rascala probably thinks he's up against what, aces? Potentially. There's yeah, the call. Yeah, he has to make the call. Such a, such a sad board. Deira. Deira. Time to say goodnight to Deira. Drawing dead in just a really, really disgusting cooler.
<laughs> yeah, I know. He knows. We all know. We don't know what to say. Kings for Peter Danielson. Imagine how happy he'll be with this one. Wow, aces. What a cooler for Danielson. And what a great spot for Fatima. There's been a raise. There's been a three bet. And she's sitting there with the aces in the big. All in. There's, wow, the quickest all in of all time. And there's nothing that Danielson can do about it. Mazhenkov gets out of the way. Fatima snap calls. And a horrible cooler for Peter Danielson as he runs kings into aces. It is the nation of domination. You fold it quick, do I think that guy's uh, working for you. Uh, not yet. <laughs> the flop is 10 trait deuce and clubs don't help Danielson. Fatima has the ace of clubs in her hand. I am better than kings now. You're better than kings now. A pocket ten. So no, Danielson no, no, drawing to two out, sneeze oh. hit a king Her on the river stays. to survive. <laughs> 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 Close but no cigar. So Peter nope. Danielson eliminated by oh. Fatima de Melo. Okay. Good game. Good luck. Cool. Wow. Okay. Playing this one slowly is Wei Wang from the button. Playing the trap. And aces oh. for Greiko in the small. <laughs> How does he wake up with the aces? Wei Wang laying the trap. He's going to think it's worked absolutely perfectly against the aggressive Nikola Greiko as well. I'm just working it out. It starts the hand with 2.9 million. If he doubles up with aces through kings, does he retake the chip lead? It will be close. Let's see if he's going to re-raise or try and trap as well in turn. It looks like those are raising chips, James. Yeah. And I imagine it'll be a sizable re-raise. Oh, this is just horrible for Wei Wang. He's going to think his trap is paying dividends. He does have position. We'll see if he just wants to... Cool. Well, we've got Ryan Reese to act first in the cutoff. Yeah, pretty sure Reese is going to ditch the fours. And I'm pretty sure that, considering what Greiko's got behind, that Huang will just shove on him. It's only 455,000 more for Reese. He does have to consider Wei Wang behind him as well. You're right, he's folding. Let's see if Wei Wang wants to <coughs> trap once again, or whether he back raises all in and tries to play for the lot. 705,000. Morning. Cool. There we go. Shove and a call. So Nikola Greiko officially the player at risk, but he is a four to one favorite here. Aces crushing kings. It's a cooler at the best of the times. Aces versus kings. But when you trap pre-flop and Nikola Greiko raises behind you, you've got to feel particularly aggrieved. Well, if aces hold here, Spraggy and Greiko doubles up. He will be pretty much tied with Maniglerza for the chip lead. Jack 10 deuce. Greiko can't watch. Just has to fade the case king on the river. There was a king folded pre. It's a nine, and so Greiko survives. 
Yes. And having been the table short stack for the last Oof. two levels, is back to being the big stack, tied with Manig Lerza for the chip lead on around 55 big blinds. Wei Huang drops down below the 40 big blind mark. <laughs> 